Good evening, Woodland Baptist Church family and whoever else may be listening. This is your service for Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. Hopefully you'll take some time to maybe sing a hymn or two. And uh, after this or before this, take some time to pray. I'm going to look at Psalm 21 tonight. Psalm 20 and 21 go together. Psalm 20 is the king and his army stopping by the tabernacle to pray for God's help before they go off to battle. Psalm 21 seems to be the same people praising God for the victory and expressing trust in God for the future. You know, God has blessed us. As God's children, we have incredible blessings. While most of us haven't gone off to war physically, we are in a spiritual battle battle every day as believers. And so we need to thank God for the victories that he gives us along the way. We should praise God for past blessings and trust him for the future. Psalm 21 divided up into two different sections. First, in the first section, verses 1 through 7, we see David praising God for past victories. You'll notice in the superscription before Psalm 21 to the chief musician, the Psalm of David. This is the Psalm of David. And so it's David praising God for the victories that he has achieved, apparently, in battle. David takes time to thank the Lord, verses 1 and 2. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord. And in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and hast not withholden the request of his lips. So at the start of his devotional time, at least how, that's how I picture it in my mind, David says, God, I'm going to take some time here to thank you for what you have done. I'm going to joy in your strength. I'm going to, to rejoice greatly in your salvation. So first there's joy in God's strength. Most conquering kings would boast in their own strength or the strength of their army. But David joys in God's strength. There's rejoicing in God's salvation. We think about salvation, what is it? Well, there's salvation, first of all, from the enemy. David was in a military situation there's an enemy out there throwing spears and arrows at him, uh, swinging their swords at him, and, and God protected him. And God still protects us physically, and there's times when it's appropriate for us to thank God for the deliverance and protection that he's given us. Uh, salvation from the consequences of sin. If that's normally what we think of as Christians, we think of salvation, God saving our soul from hell, Three aspects of, of this, we think of the three Ps, salvation from the penalty of sin. Before we know Christ as Savior, our default destination is the lake of fire. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're no longer facing that penalty. Penalty of sin, power of sin. Some of you have experienced the power of sin in addictions in various forms. And when we trust Christ as Savior, God helps to break that power of sin. And then someday from the very presence of sin, someday we'll leave this earth, either through death, most likely, or through the rapture, we don't know. And we will be with God, we'll not be in the presence of sin any longer. And so we can rejoice in God's salvation. Hey, we're going to win this battle with sin one way or another. When we know Christ as Savior, we should rejoice in that. Joy and blessings, verse 2, thou hast given him his heart's desire, likely a victory in battle. Uh, the heart's desire, that was what he had wished for, was victory in that battle. And that was a request of his lips there, verse 2, hast not withholden the request of his lips. You see that word selah there that normally was silent, that meant to, to stop and think about what was just said. So for you, what is your heart's desire? What is the request of your lips? What would happen if God answered your number one prayer request? Do we really dare to boldly ask the big requests? We should. We should pray for those hard cases to be saved. We should pray for 
God to change people's lives and hearts, and we need to praise God then when he does answer. Verses 3 and 4, David lists answered requests, some things that God has done for him. For thou preventest him with the blessing of goodness, thou settest a crown of pure gold upon his head. First he says God prevents, and that word prevents means meets. God meets him with the blessings of his goodness. God meets us with goodness every day. I sleep in a warm house. I sleep on a bed. The bed has sheets. There's blankets. Look around my bedroom and it's all full of stuff. There's clothes and closet. Uh, shelves are well stocked with food and things. The refrigerator has things in it. Freezer has food in it. A loving family, sweet peace of a relationship with God, the sure hope of heaven, and, and on and on and on. God meets us with blessings every day. And we need to be thankful for that. It says here, uh, verse 3, Thou settest a crown of pure gold upon his head. Second half of verse 3. David says, God, you gave me my crown. Crown represents position. Position as a king. It's a crown of pure gold. <laughs> Not bad for a shepherd boy. It says, God, you gave me life there, verse 3. For he asked life of thee, the king had asked life of you, God, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. Four different ways God answers this, had answered this request for life and the way God answers it for, for us, some of us sometimes. First of all, those protection, protection of his life in battle. David recognized that God had protected his life in battle, and we ought to daily praise God for protection in our lives. David had a long physical life. We may or may not have that. 1 Chronicles 29, 26 through 28, for a man like David who had faced many Enemies in risky situations. He died as an old man in his own bed. First Chronicles 29, 26. Thus, David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. The time he reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron. And 30 and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his stead. And so... David says, God, you have really blessed me. A good long life. God gave David a promise of enduring kingship. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel 7, verse 8 and 16, just to summarize it. This is the Davidic covenant where God promises an enduring kingship kingship through the line of David, which will ultimately be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. 2 Samuel 7, 8, uh, Nathan the prophet talking to David about what God had said. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And then down to verse 16, and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. In Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33, where uh, the angel Gabriel is speaking to Mary, telling her of God's wishes for her to be the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is said about Jesus Luke 1, 32 and 33. He shall be great, shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give unto him, what? The throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And so back in Psalm 21, uh, David had a promise of an enduring kingship. And then of eternal life in heaven, Psalm 16, 9 through 11. 
Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My, heart, my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave thine holy one in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the, pre- the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So David says, God, you gave me life. Then David expresses his gladness in God, verses 5 through 7 of Psalm 21. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. So David expresses his gladness. He says, my glory is great in God. We should seek to honor uh, God and his majesty. And our, that's where our honor comes from, not people. God has blessed David, and David is glad there. In verse 6, you've made him most blessed forever, exceeding glad with your countenance. Countenance, the face of God, might be our, our smile. We have all kinds of promises in Christ. Then David pledges not to move from his trust in God, verse 7, for the king trusteth in the Lord. There's the old song, I just keep trusting my Lord. David says, I'm just going to keep trusting my Lord. The mercy of the Most High, I'm not going to be moved. So we should praise God for past blessings and trust him for the future. Then verses 8 through 13, the voice changes to the people, maybe the soldiers, the nation. When I say the whole nation, I don't mean necessarily everybody in the nation, but the majority of the people. And these people are saying what they believed God would do through their king. First of all, David will find his enemies. Verse 8, thine hand, your hand, David, shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. One of the major problems for law enforcement is finding those who are guilty. And the people say, David, we believe God is going to help you find out those who are guilty. And then David and God will punish the enemies. Verse 9, thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. David and God punish the enemies. The oven there for a Jew at that time in culture would often be a big pot. And sometimes in order to get the inside of the oven heated up quickly, they would put some wood actually in the oven itself and heat it up. And it's as if, David, we believe God's going to be as if he puts your enemies inside that oven and and burns them. And then the Lord will swallow them up. Think of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram in the time of Moses and the wilderness wanderings who rebelled against God. And what did God do? He opened up the earth and swallowed them up. Look on at Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Verses 17 and 18 says, The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram, and a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. That's exactly what had happened in that company. And they believe that God would do that for David's enemies, not necessarily literally opening the earth, but God would take care of the enemies, and God did take care of David's enemies. Then the offspring of the wicked were also to be destroyed. Verse 10. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. We say, oh, that's kind of cruel to destroy the children. But the truth is the offspring of wicked people usually continue on in wickedness. And... uh, God would destroy them. Now, God is merciful, and God knows how to spare. God spared Rahab there in that city of Jericho. But as a general rule, wicked parents raise wicked kids. 
The wickedness of the wicked is the reason for their destruction, verses 11 and 12, for they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device, which they were not able to perform. Therefore thou shalt make them turn their back, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. David, when you go into battle against them, we believe that God is going to give you the victory. It doesn't matter what kind of evil schemes they come up with, what kind of mischievous plans, they're not going to be able to perform them. When uh, you put your arrows on their strings, they're going to run away from you in fear because we believe that God is with you. David was God's anointed king. And when the wicked were attacking David, they were attacking God. You know, the wicked attacking Christians are really attacking Christ. In Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 5, where the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the Damascus road, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? The way God looked at it, the Lord Jesus Christ looked at it, Saul was persecuting Christ. Now we, today, in this church age, we don't attack our enemies. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 45, the perspective of Christians, you've heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor, hate thine enemy, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. And so we are to love our enemies and let God deal with them. Then in verse 13, the whole nation exalts God. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. They wanted God, Yahweh, to be exalted in his strength. They weren't about themselves and them being exalted. It was about God. And so they pledge to sing and praise his power. And that should be our pledge as well. So David... And his people thanked God for the victory. We need to do the same. We should praise God for past blessings and trust him for the future. I'm just going to read a few words from a hymn, Be Thou Exalted. Be thou exalted forever and ever, God of eternity, the ancient of days, wondrous in majesty, so mighty in wisdom, perfect in holiness, and worthy of praise. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee. Thine be the glory forever. Amen. Be thou exalted, O Son of the Highest, gracious Redeemer, our Savior and King. One with the Father, co-equal in glory. Here at thy footstool our homage we bring. Be thou exalted, O Spirit eternal. Dwell in our hearts, keep us holy within. Feed us each day with thy heavenly manna, healer of wounded hearts, thy praises we sing. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems with rapture adore thee. Thine be the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the victories that you've given. We thank you for the victory that the Lord Jesus Christ won at the cross that he rose from the tomb in victory for the victory we have in you. May we remember that. May we praise you, Father. Father, care for these people, their situations, that you'd meet needs, and help us to exalt you and trust you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.